any unpredictability as to when a particle will arrive at a particular point is explained entirely in terms of what happens at the source. And at the source, one simply has a wave of constant intensity producing a constant probability of emission. So the statistical aspects are easily explained in terms of unknown parameters in the source. Nothing unusual occurs at the screen in this theory. So the whole subject of measurement theory simply evaporates. The forward wave theory requires a measurement theory because, at least in the conventional interpretations, the particle is a wave while scattering, but then becomes a particle when it's observed. The reverse wave theory involves nothing similar to this. First, the wave makes its trip, including any, inter any interference amongst the waves, before the particle is emitted. The particle then travels as a particle and is observed as a particle. So we've already achieved one enormous simplification relative to quantum mechanics. Now, suppose we cover one of the slits. We know experimentally that the interference pattern disappears. Instead, you just get a broad, more or less continuous distribution on the screen. Uh, even at the dark fringes, the places where you saw no particles originally, you will now see particles by covering one of the slits. So by reducing the number of passageways, uh, you increase the number of particles that arrive at those dark areas of the screen. And forward wave quantum mechanics explains this by saying that the wave through the open slit no longer interferes, pardon me, the wave through the open slit no longer interferes with that through the closed slit. Um, and so the, the interference disappears and you start to get an amplitude where it was dark before. In the reverse wave theory, the wave from the formerly dark fringe comes back through the, the open slit and similarly is not interfered with by the, uh, the wave through the now closed slit. So particles now will be emitted when they weren't emitted before, and they'll go through the open slit and onto the screen, and you'll see them there. So we see why covering one of the slits increases the number of particles at those formerly dark areas. But now this is simply explained without any non-local interaction between the two slits. In the forward wave theory, if one attempts an interpretation such as Bohm's, in which the particle remains a particle as it travels through the slits, one cannot explain this phenomena without assuming some kind of non-local interaction between the slits. The particle, when it goes through the open slit, somehow has to know that the other slit is closed. Otherwise, it can't decide which direction to go as it leaves the open slit. Now, that's connected to what I said a, a moment ago, regarding theories in which particles follow waves. Uh, could you clarify? Yes. The forward wave emitted from screen, are they emitted uniformly? Yes. In phase? Yes, every, every small local area will emit the same amount of the wave. I'll talk later about how that happens. <coughs> so, as I said, it's connected to what I said earlier regarding particles following waves. In the reverse wave theory, there's only one choice for the particle as it leaves the slit. If it's following a wave that came from a dark fringe before, it has only that one direction to go when it goes through the slit. And you can determine that direction without any kind of non-local interaction with the other slit. But in a forward wave theory, the particle has to make a choice when it goes through the slit. And it can only do this non-locally by knowing what's happening at the other slit. And again, a wave which is a time reverse of a forward wave, as in the transactional interpretation, doesn't help here. With a time reversed wave, the particle would still have to make a choice as it left the slit. So uh, uh, the branches of the time reversed wave would still be coming apart. And the only way to make the choice is with a non-local interaction.
Now, in the forward wave theory, as the wave scatters from the slit, the particle might be observed almost anywhere on the screen. So because of momentum conservation, the slits don't know which way to recoil until the particle is observed. When the particle is observed, then somehow, backwards in time, the slits recoil accordingly, or something equally unphysical in the other interpretations. But with the reverse waves, the choice of wave is made at the source, choice between waves coming from all the different points on the screen. Wa waves from all different points arrive there, and the choice is made at the source. So when the particle scatters at the slits, it already knows where it's going to appear on the screen, and the slits recoil, recoil accordingly at the same time that the particle goes through. So nothing has to happen backwards in time. Now I should explain, the waves in this theory don't themselves impart any momentum to the particles. Only another particle can do that. Any scattering of a particle will involve another particle following another wave. If you imagine something uh, looking like a vertex in a Feynman diagram with a, a scattering and a, another wave coming in, the particle following its wave scatters because the secondary wave stimulates the emission of a secondary particle. So momentum is then conserved among the particles. And I'll describe that in more detail later on. But the waves themselves don't push or pull on the particles. They just serve as, as if you will, a, a picture of how the particles are then going to interact under the influence of these waves. So, for example, at the slits in this experiment, the, the, uh, the wave scatters due to interaction with a photon wave from the slits. And the particle then scatters because that photon wave stimulates the emission of a particle photon as the electron passes. The waves direct the whole process, but the result is momentum conservation only among the particles. Now, if we put a detector in one of the slits to try to determine through which slit the particle went, we know experimentally that the interference pattern disappears. And forward wave quantum mechanics cannot explain this in a local manner. But in the reverse wave theory, a detector will only observe a particle if the particle is following a wave coming from that detector. But a wave from the detector placed in one of the slits is not going to interfere with the wave from the screen that goes to the other slit. They're only going to interfere if they have a common source. So the fact that the, the interference disappears if you put a detector here is, is trivially explained and locally explained in this reverse wave theory. This example, by the way, serves an illustration of how the reverse wave theory explains the phenomena connected with non-commuting observables. Any measurement requires the insertion of a real detector, and perhaps the addition of some apparatus as well. Any particle that will be observed by the detector then must be following a wave coming from that detector. The measuring apparatus itself generates the waves that will determine how the particle moves. So with a different apparatus, one gets different waves. So it's clear physically why the act of measurement affects what is seen. And of course, whatever measurement device one uses, one will get the same result as quantum mechanics by the very same reciprocity argument that I gave earlier. 